Hi guys, uh, welcome to it. It is our day 8 of the Leadership Summit. I am very, very happy uh, that you have joined us today. I just wanted to start today before with that with prayer. It's a very good Friday and I wanted to also remember our Creator that in all things that we are doing today, it's, it will be nothing in Malehela, La Malehela, if we are not doing it for He who we have created us. And I would like to welcome you. My name is Mumpolo Kimagwana and I'm from Malalada. My books are available for sale. And remember, like I told you, I have that booklet that is ready for you. Great news, I welcome you. I'm going to be teaching on our next half of our of our summit i'm going to be teaching around that book and teaching you how you can use it every single day to proclaim the goodness that you have in your life to proclaim the greatness you have in your life and i'm challenging you wherever you are for the fact that you are seeing this it means you are still in the game for the fact that you are seeing me and you can hear me it means you are still in the game and be thankful and grateful that you are alive be thankful and grateful that you are alive and everything can change everything can get better situations right now the way they are they can get better they can get better and everything else will get better things will begin to go up some will go down some will go up will go down it's life and we are not going to give up we are not going to run away we are not going to cry because we don't understand what's the path we are going to be sure-footed as a deer that this can change. I remember the Bible of in the words of Habakkuk, uh, they said he was he was a sure-footed like a deer. You know, he knew that the Lord will have sustained us and the Lord will continue to sustain us and the Lord will continue to give us ways on how to get better along the way. So I am challenging you for the fact that you can see this right now. It means you are still in the game. It means you can go one more mile. You can do one more trial. You can do one more apology. You can share one more message of I love you. You can share more one message of I care about you. So right now we are about to start today's, uh, you know, topic and today's topic talks about, you know, changing the story of your life, changing the story of your life, you know, changing the story of your life. I don't know right now when you look at your life, what kind of life do you say you are living? What kind of life? Is it something that you are happy for? Is it, Are you in a position where you can say, I am happy to be where I am today. I am happy to be in the position that I am today. I am happy about my career. I'm happy about my children. I'm happy about my family. I'm happy about my relationships. I'm happy about my friends. Are you happy where you are? Are you happy where you are? Today, I just want to know what kind of story are you sharing about your life? What kind of story are you sharing today about your life? Because so many people today, we are sharing the stories of defeat. We are sharing the stories of lack. We are sharing, sharing the stories of hateful feelings. We are sharing the story of our fears. We are sharing the stories of our, our, our in, you know, inabilities. And therefore, most of the time, so many people find themselves being concentrated or focused on the story of lack. We find ourselves focused on what we are not capable of doing. We are focused on what we are not capable of bringing forth. And therefore, most of the time, regardless of the seasons, even when seasons keep on changing, we are still stuck. We are not seeing any progress in our relationships. We are not seeing any progress in whatever that we do because of the stories we keep sharing ourselves. I want you to share with me where you are watching from. I would really appreciate that. Where are you watching from? And I'll be happy to see uh, those who are online to say, I am watching from. And introduce yourself. Where are you watching from? I'm Puliki Makwana here, and I am right from the capital city in Khaburoni. So wh where are you watching from? I would like to know where you're watching from. Before we get started with the topic of today about changing the story of your life, changing the story of your life. From our today's topic about changing the story of your life, let me look at my notes. There is a quote that I've shared that I was listening to, you know, this gentleman, T.D. Jakes. Uh, he was talking about going through everything that we are going through. Hi, Kenny Emmanuel in Keto. Thank you so much uh, for joining. He said he's watching from Gaps. You are welcome. And already say, Maraka Horar, we thank Almighty for the gift of life. We are thankful and we are grateful and we, we, are, we are happy because this is the day that the Lord has made and therefore we shall rejoice in it. And Anne Are, yes, Seattle, Washington, uh, you, uh, Washington, US. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Um, we are grateful and we are happy 
for the day that we are having today. And like I said, for the fact that you are seeing this, it means you are in the game. For the fact that you are seeing this, it means you have something to do. It means you still have an assignment to do. Uh, she's saying, uh, the country that I'm, I'm at is Botswana. I'm in Botswana in Africa. I am in Botswana. And therefore, we should challenge ourselves every single day to be in a position of understanding that nothing will ever change unless we are willing to change ourselves. Nothing in our lives, nothing in the outside will not change until we are willing to do an inside job. That is something that I've been sharing for the past seven days, that we owe it to ourselves. If we want to see any transformation, if we want to see any growth, if we want to see any improvement, we must be in a position to understand nothing will ever change in the outside if we are not changing our internal configuration. You may look at a personal computer, PC in short, and it may be beautiful, decorated on the outside, but if the internal processes are not working, the beauty does not matter. You may look at a house, beautiful on the outside, colorful colors, you know, beautiful design, but if inside is not working well, there are holes that allows water to come through, there, 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 there are holes everywhere, it's not well uh, designed in the inside, it is of no use. And therefore, like I said, now, everything in the outside does not matter if we are not having a firm and established internal configuration as individuals. We cannot change anything in the outside if we are not starting in the inside. Growth, development, and progress is an inside job. We must be willing to understand that every single day, our change will only happen when we work in ourselves, when we work in our internal world, when we are saying, I am willing from now onwards to deal with my insecurities. I am willing from now onwards to deal with my fears. I am willing from now onwards to deal with, with my, my laziness. I am willing from now onwards to deal with my lack of emotional control, my lack of emotional intelligence. I am willing to become a better person. We don't just will to become better people and we start buying clothes to cover up for our insecurities. We cannot buy clothes to cover up for our insecurities. We cannot buy the makeup, you know, to make up for our laziness. We cannot cover anything on the outside if we are not doing any internal work, if we are not any internal configuration. The laptop may look beautiful in the outside, but if the RAM, if the, the internal configuration, if the system, the software inside of the PC is not working, it is of no use. So, we are only going to see progress, breakthroughs, and success, and improvement in our families, improvement in how we communicate with our kids, improvement on how we communicate with our spouses, improvement on how we communicate at our workplaces. We are going to see an improvement in our results at our workplaces. We are only going to see success in our fruitful relationships, our success in our churches, success in our organizations. We can only experience those beautiful things in the outside if we are willing to work on our internal configuration. And therefore, that is why I'm saying, what story have you been working on on your inside? It's like you are a radio, and when you put a certain cassette or a compact disc, which we call in, in, in short, a CD, when you put that CD in that radio, when you press play, the music that is going to come out is the stories within that compact disc. It's nothing else. You may wish that maybe this CD can say something else, you know, can, can, can play a certain song that I love. But if the song is not in that compact disc, the, the radio is going to play the songs that are in the CD. What kind of CD have you been playing in your life? that has given you the results you have in your relationship today? What kind of CD have you been playing right now in your work area that has given you the results that you have today? 
What kind of CD and melody and music have you been playing in your internal world that is giving you what you are today? You are where you are because of the CD you are playing inside of you. You are where you are because of your internal configuration and nothing will change where you are until you change your internal world. That is the commitment we have to make. That through this crisis, we may be crying. Everyone is crying. Everyone is going through something. Everyone is faced with something. We all wake up each day and news from all sides are hitting us. Good and bad news. It's a competition between the good and the bad. We are no longer going to wait and say we are doomed. That is not an option. As long as you are still here, it means you are still in the game. And therefore we are going to challenge ourselves and say, I am willing to do my best. I see uh, Mimi are in, in Botswana. Thank you, Mimi, for joining us. And I can also see Murulahanyi are watching from Habroni this morning. Thank you so much, Mr. Murulahanyi, for joining us. So, our internal world dictates our external world. Today, I am talking about changing the story of your life. Here's what I want to start with. We are where we are right now. When you look around on your finances, your bank balance right now, when you look at your job position where you, your earnings right now, when you look at the kind of the relationship where it is right now, happy or not happy, middle happy, taken, single, not interested, any kind of stage of your relationship right now, you are where you are because of the stories you keep playing in your internal system, which is your internal you. You are where you are right now because of the stories you keep believing that that is what is going to happen. There are people who wake up every single morning and they believe that great news are going to follow them. Like my booklet, uh, Great News, I Welcome You. There are people who wake up every morning and they believe that good news is going to follow them. They believe that, you know, promotion is on the way. They believe that success is on the way. They believe that their kids will get better. That their sons, maybe those who are sick or not, they will get better. That someone who is in prison in their family, he will be transformed and he will come back and join the society and behave well. There are people who wake up every day and the system and the music they are playing in the inside of them is that things are going to get better. Things will improve. I may not be where I want to be today, but things will improve over time. I may not be where I want to be with regards to the job that I'm looking for, but I'm going to do my best where I am right now so that when the opportunity comes for me to make a move, I will be ready. There are people who wake up with courage every single day that it might not be where I am. I might not be in the position that I'm seeking for. I might not be having the money that I need. I might not be building my business to where I want it to be. But I know that things will change and improve over time. That is the commitment that some people wake up each day and they believe that their lives can change. They wake up each day and believe that this too shall pass. They believe that we shall get better. Things will get better. And then on the other side, on the other hand, there are people who wake up each day and they believe that nothing is coming. They are demoralized, no energy, no motivation, no zeal whatsoever to live. They wake up each day and every time when they step in the room, the energy just they absorb all the energy. They switch off all the lights. They suck in all the lights in the room. When they get, when you have one minute or 10 minutes conversation with them, you feel anxiety taking over you. You feel like this person is like they have this dark cloud around them. These are people right now who are activating and the story of their life is this. Nothing will ever change. I am stuck where I am. There is no solution. I don't have any solution that I can do. There's nothing that I can do. I am going through my worst of worst. What else is expected from me? I cannot do anything. These are people who are not intentional in forming their reality. But now because I'm telling you, you, you are starting to separate between the two. People who show up with light and those who show up with darkness. Now, you can make a decision today that from today onwards, 
I am willing to change the story that I've been saying. I am willing to change the music that I've been playing in my internal world. But I am willing to show up with courage. I am willing to show up with motivation. I am willing to show up with kindness, with love, with joy, with peace, with creativity, with courage. Every single day when I wake up, I am willing to show up with determination, knowing that things can change. I have a strong belief that things can change. Then you have to decide in your life that I am willing to change. Let me say our thought of the day today. Our thought of the day today is from T.D. Jakes. He said, it is not the movement of the clock that is going to bring newness in your life. He said, it is not the movement of the clock that is going to bring newness in your life. He said, it is the movement in your mind that is going to bring newness in your life. It is not the clock or the time that is going to bring newness in your life. It is the movement of you in your mind that is going to bring new things in your life. He said, we don't have to call forth to say, I need new things. Here's how he, he concluded. He said, a new life comes from seeing your life in a new way. That's so powerful. He said, a new life comes from seeing your life in a new way. That, of course, we are all going through this crisis. No one is excluded. It is, has no, you know, in a, a, a separation of color or separation of age or gender. We are all going through the same crisis. But a new life in this crisis is only going to come from seeing our life in a new way. So, New things in our life have nothing to do with what is happening on the outside. They have nothing to do with what is happening on, on the weather. They have nothing to do with the economy. They have nothing to do with your friends. They have nothing to do with your relationships right now. They have nothing to do with your position at work right now. New life in your life has all to do with your ability to see your life in a new way. That means an internal job. Like I always say, growth and development is an internal job. If you are not working on the internal world, you are not going to see any beautiful in the external world. Your reactions, your successes, your breakthroughs, and what I'm saying right now has nothing to do with the weather. It has to do with what I have cultivated in the inside of me. And therefore, every single day, I show up with courage because I cultivate courage in me. Every single day, I show up with motivation because I cultivate motivation in me. Every single day, I show show up with creativity. I show up with new ideas, new books, new programs, new topics because I am cultivating newness in me and that has nothing to do with the external world. So we must make a decision to say I am aware that we are going through hard times but I can create an environment in the inside of me of peace so that I can start thinking clearly through, the prob through this problem. Remember what I said yesterday. So many people are operating from their feelings and some are operating from their principles. Now, people who are able to operate from their principles, they have made the decision that the story of my life is this. I am going to operate with principles all the days of my life to get better. I am going to operate from principles all the days of my life so that I can get better. And therefore, it's an internal job to grow. It's an internal job to face situation. It's an internal job to make breakthroughs. It's an internal job to make success, to make a promotion, to, to get a new job. It's an internal job. It's nothing on the outside. A new life has to do with your ability to see your life as it is right now in a new way. A new life that you are seeking for is all about your ability to see your life right now in a new way. That where you once saw lack, you are seeing abundance. That where you once saw people not supporting you, now you are start seeing those who are supporting you. Where you once saw people pushing you down, you are now focusing on those who are promoting and up elevating you. Where you once saw people persecuting you, now you are focusing on those who are improving and promoting and elevating you. That is a way of shifting to a new life. It has to do with your ability to see your life as it is right now in a new way. What is it that we can see now? That we can start activating in ourselves. That from now onwards, 
We are not waiting for anyone. We are not waiting for the government. We are not waiting for the medical professions. We are doing our best in our rooms. We are improving our communication with our kids. We are improving communication with our spouses because now we are spending more time together. We are bound to annoy each other. Now we are spending more time together. We are bound to recognize a lot about each other. Now, how can we deal with that? How can we cultivate that and make it an advantage for us? That is the challenge we have to do. Going through crisis means to move away from what the world is crying on, to move into the inside of you and pull the skills, abilities, knowledge, and creativity that you can put forth and say, this is what I am going to do. While everyone is complaining, I'll be working on my vision. I'll be writing that book. I'll be pro preparing for that program. I'll be starting that new project. I'll be testing my processes. I'll be looking at my structure. I'll be improving my things. That is the challenge to do. It's a challenge that we have to make this week, that we are going to see our lives in a new way. And that means a shift in our mindset from moving from lack to abundance, from moving from fear to courage, from moving from disappointment to appointment, from moving from misery to doing more. So it's a challenge that each and every one of us has to do in order to change the story of our lives. Right now, it's automatic. We know people are sad, people are hurt, we are all crying. That is the story that is available. But there's the other story we can, we can tap into. The story of courage. The story that things will get better. The story that even though we don't know when, even though we don't know how much time it will take, even though we don't know how much, you know, failures we are going to get through in order to master this and kill this, uh, whatever we are faced with right now. But we are going to build a story in us that we shall overcome, we shall make a breakthrough, we shall get through this, we shall keep on keeping on, that at some point in time, as we keep on doing our best, along the way, we shall overcome. There gets a point in our lives where we are not sure of what is going to happen. We are not sure of what we are going to get, that every single morning when we wake up, we don't know the news that is going to reach our ears, but it's just those who are not cultivating that inner world, who are going to experience more losses than those who are really losing. It is those that are not cultivating that internal world, being ready and cultivating their emotions, being ready and cultivating that inner strength, being ready and cultivating that inner courage, who are going to face more losses when, they, when, they, when, when, when everything hits the wire. And therefore, my challenge is that because you are here and you constantly listen to my segments. I want you to make a personal commitment that through this crisis, I am going to work on myself. I am going to nourish that, that, that zeal to serve in me. And I'm going to work on something. I am not going to lie idle and watch. I am going to be an active participant in bringing solutions and not problems. There are so many people today, when they wake up, the news they are sharing is about problem, 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 problem. Every time you see a notification from them, it's a problem, a problem, a problem. I want us to, to, to discipline ourselves and say, I am going to share goodness in this world. When, when, when it hits the wire like it is right now, I am going to be a source of influence, a source of love, a source of encouragement, a source of motivation. We know that we are going through pain. You don't have to publicize it. We know that we are going through issues. You don't have to be posting about it. But at this moment, the world needs more light than darkness. And it is when it's dark that we can see the stars. This is when now you have to show up and do your part. This is when now you have to show up and bring the light that we are looking for, like I am doing right now. That this moment we are going to pass through it. This season is here to pass. Seasons, that's what they do. They come to pass. And we are here right now so that we can prepare for the upcoming season. And we cannot prepare by going outside. We cannot prepare by running in the outside. We are in the inside. We are in the right position. Because like I say, growth and development is an inside job. You are inside so that we can build something right now. 
one of my mentees shared something to me. He said, Mr. Magwana, if you cannot go outside, then go in the inside. In the inside of you, there's the unlimited potential, the unlimited power of that we are given by the Creator Himself that we can activate on and start working on. Let me read some, some of your, your comments. Uh, Mr. Donald Mwedi are following. Thank you, Mr. Mwedi, for joining us. And uh, don't wait for anyone to validate you. Validate yourself and move forward. Don't blame anything around you. We give away our power when we blame. When we complain, when we finger point, we are saying, I don't have the power. It's already who took my power. That is why I am. There are so many stories. That is why I am. It's because of my parents. Uh, they didn't allow me to do this. My husband didn't allow me to start that business. My spouse was not supportive. At work, they don't, they don't get my ideas. They don't give me an opportunity. We have so many stories. Uh, they, you know, it's, it's hard times right now. I can sit down and cry and say, my book sales have, have lo uh, I've lost all my book sales. I can cry right now. We're supposed to do seven gigs with some major corporations, with team building and development, some of the bookings, we're supposed to do team building a two day, some two day, you know, program for customer service because we work with employees to creating high performance culture. Seven emails saying we are, we are, we are, we are postponing this. And I, I can sit down and say, oh my God, why is this happening to me? But I'm showing up every day and I'm telling you, it's possible and we are going to get through this. There are so many things to blame right now. But right now, focus on what you can do. If you can don't do anything, don't talk about it. If you're not bringing any solutions, don't talk about it. I'm, I'm making a comment on what Orelite has enlightened us with. And then suppose to see where from Iswatina are those that are not cultivating that inner world will suffer more losses. Exactly. This is a mental game. This is a mental time. You know, it, we are not affected by the physical because they are even telling us, you know, that sometimes you don't even see these uh, symptoms, but you, you, you have it. And, and it's psychologically affecting so many people today. Yesterday, we were about to listen to the parliamentary debates. The, the first news when we were thinking of the opening prayer, they opened with the bad news that we have gotten more uh, and another, you know, infectious, more than five People now have been identified with this disease. So every single day, our emotions and our hormones are in use. Chemical secretion are excreted in our bodies. And because, because, because of what we are thinking, we are thinking, oh my God, this is the end of us. And now you are putting in those enzymes of flight or fight. And you are not doing anything. You are not even flighting or flighting. So they are affecting your body now. They are affecting you. So our mental game, is the one which will help us. Our internal world is the one which will stand for us in our way. L let me go to my presentation for today. Uh, point number one, when we change our story in our life is this. You are where you are because of the story you have about you. <clears throat> you are where you are because of the story you keep sharing about you. Now, if you have a book right now, I want you to write three things. What are the stories from your young age? That you have kept telling yourself. What are the stories from your young age that you kept telling yourself that I am going to become this. I am this. I am powerful. You know, I am going to be this. I'm going to be a lawyer. I'm going to be that. I'm going to be that. And you kept having those stories. And now along the way, because of now the society and networking with other people, you left the, those stories and then you have borrowed their stories, which I term borrowed self-belief now you are believing what other people are saying about you i see why my mentor said this do not let other people's opinion of you to become your reality do not let other people's opinion of you to become your reality those are the words of les brown now that we have to be able to say this is the story i believe about me i remember telling my my mother that i want to be a speaker i want to be a coach i want to be an educator i want to be a consultant i have this certificate from all over america south africa finland and botswana but, but i want to be a facilitator i want to be someone who is going to create change social change through my program and my business and so i had to move away from her story that my son has been qualified in countries and international you know scholarships now he's going to find a job now i had to move from her story of a job to my story of creating jobs 
So many people today, they are operating from the script of the people around them. They don't have stories for themselves. Now, they are borrowing beliefs from those around them. And they are letting people in that circle to dictate the future they want to go for. Changing your story means shifting from people-based stories to personal-based stories. People-based stories to personal-based stories. What story do you have for your life? What is it? that you want to see yourself at the end. When you are sitting on your deathbed, what do you want your life to reflect on? That this is what I have done. I've, I've, I've showed up. I've done what I can do. I had ideas. I executed them. That is the story I have for my life. Most people are suffering today not from diseases, but from the regrets. That they are regretting the things they never did. And therefore, when we change the story from, ah, it's my mother who said I should do this. It's my brother who said I should do this. It's my boss. Who else? It's the government. Who else? It's the policies. Who else? There are so many things to blame. But at the end of the day, activate your story. Live on the script created by you and not the script created by other people. Get in a position to understand, I am not going to wait for other people to pave a path for me. Today, I am building a new story that this is where I am going. And as you do that, your thoughts, your mind, your nerves, your thinking, your mindset, your attitude will change to match up to the story you are saying. And under those story, identify the story that you have right now for your life. Because we are about to break down the norm. Identify the story you have about your life. That sometimes as you grow up, I wrote about this in my first book, The Birth of Greatness. The soft copy is available if you need The Birth of Greatness. Let me know. If you need my second book, Embrace Your Greatness, soft copy available, let me know. If you need my third book, Celeb Great News, I Welcome You Today, is available. I see Donald say, Connection Challenges. No problem, Mr. Donald. I'll cut it and I'll share with you. And therefore, at the end of the day, be in a position to know that your story that you keep telling yourself is the one which is going to change your life. Your story that you keep telling yourself is the one which is going to change your life. And therefore, point number two, after you identify the story that you've been talking about, is the time to shift away from that. If you have something new that you want to build in your life, now you are going into what I, I call, when I do my sessions, auto-suggestion. There are certain things now you want to suggest to your mind, that my mind, now onwards, when I wake up, this is the routine. When I go to sleep, this is what I want to think, I want to do. So through those audios that I shared about affirmations, now you are affirming into your future different kind of routine that you want to build. You are intentional now to say, now I'm waking up at five, I do these exercises, by six, I start my work, by eight, I do this, by 12, I take a break. That is my routine every day. I know I have a routine. There's an entertainment routine. In the afternoon, I can watch the movies that I want to watch. In the afternoon. But during the day, it's business as usual. Why? Because I have a story that I want to make progress. When we get out of this, I want to be 10 steps ahead, 100 steps ahead. I want to be creating solutions. I want to be offering programs, booklets, audios, because I am intentional that during this crisis, I am not going for the wait for the crisis to end. I am showing up right now so that I can create solution. Be in a position where the story of your life is governed by you. Don't wait for other people to tell you what to do. Don't wait for other people to dictate what you can do for your life. Be in a position where you are showing up and doing the best you can possibly do every single day. And then number three, about changing your story. Changing your story, number one, I say, identify the story that you keep sharing about yourself. Number two, build a new story. Through auto-suggestion, through reading books, through listening to audios like you are listening right now. Now, be present and be intentional on shaping a new path that you want to see in your life. This is the best time to do it. Number three, and which is the last one, find a community of growing people. Find a network of people who can push you to become your best. Most of my students at, at my academy, the Empowered Second Leadership Academy, I realize that they are able to create amazing results just because they have a circle of people around them who want to create amazing results. When, when you are filled with the fire and desire to do more, but surrounding yourself with people who are filled with the desire to blame and complain all the time, 
they neutralize your dream and at the end of the day they kill your dream and sometimes those people are the people who are our friends they are the people who are our relatives they are our spouses they are our husbands they are our sisters and our brothers but we must be mindful that we do have a choice to know who we want to associate with and the people we want to hang around, the people we want to always hear from. As we do that, on my Facebook, when you get to my Facebook, when you are in my account, the see first, this is Les Brown, Eric Thomas, Brendan Butchard, all the content that I see is about motivation, empowerment, education shift, about economy building. This is the information I am choosing intentionally to listen to and to apply and to do in my life. I am auto suggesting to my mind that think of ideas on the education system that is why we have a problem teach to impact think of ideas on when this crisis ends what will people need they will need staff morale they will need staff motivation create a program for that when when this ends as a restaurant but people will have gained weight some people will, will, will want to lose weight what kind of food can i create and sell that is aimed at weight loss I wish I can say something different, but when you are a growing person and you hang around growing people, they help you to create ideas which are evolving. You are not stagnant because you are hanging around people who are challenging you to become the best. So find the people around you who are influencing you and challenging you to become your best, who are challenging you to do the best every single day. That is the challenge of growth. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mumbulik Makwana, and like I said, copies of my soft copies Books are available if you need them. Contact me on WhatsApp. My number is 74776196. 74776196. My academy is open for registration enrollment for the second cohort of this year. And if you want to be part of it, I can share you with all the information that is needed so that we can start right away. The best time to start is now. Remember this. Every morning, many people are not living their dreams because they are living their fears. Many people are not living their dreams because they are living their fears. They are always scared of what will happen. I will challenge you that from now onwards, do your best. Focus on becoming the best you can possibly be. And focus on becoming the best in your field. I'm challenging you. So get the best of the best. Make sure you share this and share with your networks. Thank you so much. you tell him you want to get to your destiny, that God you serve, he going to show you how to do it. You can believe that. Don't forget to pray. Don't be ashamed to pray. And don't ever be too proud.